going to be talking about bank fishing today. I'm going to be talking specifically about how difficult this time of the year is. Late spring, early summer, and then through summer for bank fishermen. It's very difficult and we're going to talk about why and some baits to maybe help you overcome the difficulties when found in those situations. If you guys haven't noticed, and if I look you know, hot and sweaty and dirty, that's because I've been mowing. It's not fun. People tell you it's fun. They put cup holders on your ride-on mowers because you think you're going to enjoy a beer while you're mowing. You're not. Nobody does that. Because if you did, it would be all shaken up and flat and spilling everywhere. And then there would be dust and grass in it, and that would be nasty. And then after you're done mowing and drinking your hot grassy beer, you'd come up like I did and continue building a fence and then be all sweaty. And then go here to make a video about bank fishing, which is what I did this morning. I went out bank fishing, trying to do a video, a totally different video, trying to get some footage for you guys for another bait that I'm going to be talking about here in the future. was going to be doing it right now, but that didn't happen. What I experienced was difficult conditions bank fishing. So I thought, the other video didn't work, I'll just make this video. Now here we are. Aren't you happy to be here? I'm happy to be here. I do need that beer though. It'll happen. As soon as I'm done talking to you guys. Let's talk about it. So, bank fishing, something we all probably have done. You guys watching, you've all banked fish at some point. A lot of people when they're growing up, you got, you know, you don't got a boat. Family doesn't have a boat, you don't have a boat because you're 12, 10, and you go out bank fishing. You go to local ponds, you go to the lake close by, fish where you can, where you can get to on the bank, where it's not like a 30 foot drop off and you're fall to your death at 12 years old. It's not good, nobody wants that. So we all grew up bank fishing for the most part, or at least have experienced it. And bank fishing is fun, I really enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's, it's harder. I really do believe that bank fishing is much harder than fishing from a boat because you have very limited access of what you can do. Like literally you gotta stand in one spot and fan cast from shore to shore and then decide that ah, there's no fish there. Because in a boat, you can pull up and be like, well, here's a point, and I'm gonna go on the deep side of the point and I can throw over. But when you're on the bank, you're like, but I'm on the shallow side of the point and I have to throw that way. And it's hard. So I think just naturally bank fishing is harder, but it is fun and it is rewarding. And if it's all you gotta do, you might as well get out there and do it because it's better than not fishing. All right? Am I right? So, in the early summer, late spring, when the water starts heating up and the grass starts to grow, becomes a really bad time for bank fishermen because now all of a sudden there's grass, like sometimes 30 feet or more out from the bank into deeper water. So now you're like, well, you can't cast a parallel to the bank because depending on what kind of grass it is, you know, it's going to dictate what you can do. If you've got like matted grass that's coming up and laying on top of the surface like hydrilla or milfoil You can't cast that way. You can't cast along the bank. What are you gonna do? Like I've done this like where it's like 20 feet out of matted grass and then open water and you cast out as far as you can and Then reel it back till about where the grass is then try to pop it So your bait comes flying out of the water over the grass. So it's not all gunked up I mean, it becomes a real nightmare bank fishing when the water starts to heat up and you get that pond, especially bank, especially, <clears throat> especially bank fishing from in a pond because you get that really thick, nasty, like gross green pond scum that's great for frogging, by the way. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you can't cast through it. Like you punch through it, but when you punch through it, it's so sticky and nasty that it just sticks to your jig or your punch skirt or your punch and weight and it just takes it all with you. You can't catch anything like that. So inherently difficult. Now depending on where you're bank fishing and what your grass looks like, you have different options. I'm sure you guys have figured some of them out. I'm going to show you some of my favorite options. Bad grass for bank fishermen isn't just the stuff that's laying on the surface. Yeah, that's terrible, but at least you can frog, right? Some of the grass that grows and ticks up just like, you know, if you're fishing, you know, from the bank to like eight feet of water and the grass goes to like six feet of water or five feet of water, you literally have like a quarter of a cast where your where your lure's not getting all jacked up. So it's very difficult. And I wanna show you some of the guys 
<clears throat> I want to show you guys some of my favorites to go to counteract some of that and hopefully get you guys putting fish on the bank when you're stuck with that nasty grass. So my first thing, let's, let's knock out the, the obvious first. I'm talking about hollow body frogs. This is a pad perch from Strike King. Um, it's a hollow body frog. We talked about this before. Um, this is great. This is one of those things where you throw that in the pond scum because it doesn't matter. It comes right over the top of it. A lot of the time you'll get it starting to, after like 15 casts, it'll start wrapping up a little bit on your braid. If you're using braid, which you should be for a frog, and it'll start gumming up right there. But honestly, like even if this thing turns upside down, as long as you're not ripping it into the pond scum, it comes right through it. So this, if you guys are fishing, if you guys are trying to fish those ponds or lakes when you got all that pond scum nastiness this is your go-to 100 percent. especially in the summer they'll hit this early in the morning they'll hit it late at evening those are the times they'll hit the best but i mean they'll hit it all day i mean you get this thing in front of a bass close enough he's gonna smack it this is really i mean my summer bait number one for bank fishing 100 percent. this is my number one i know that i can fish this literally anywhere if i get to the lake and I got a nice open water spot, boom, I can fish this. If not, boom, I can fish this. It's perfect. Throw a frog in the summer from the bank, from a boat, doesn't matter. But specifically from the bank, it's the best thing for you in this difficult time. Now, let's continue on the top water nonsense. A couple things here. If you guys have grass in your area where you're fishing that, like I said, doesn't come up and lay on the surface or isn't clogging the surface and you got at least a little bit of clearance, you know, at least a few inches of clear water before that grass starts to touch, that's where you can, I mean, you just open up all your top water now. I mean, we're talking spooks. This is that big boy, that sexy shad mega dog. Um, another good one is like uh, the river to sea. You guys know I love that one, the rover. It's amazing. I mean, any spook walking bait in the summer, especially early morning, especially if you've got a groups, if you got groups of fish that you think you can get on, like especially in lakes. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with spooks in ponds. I have caught some on it, but it just seems like the fish in the lakes are more keyed in on bait fish and like keyed in on specific types of bait fish that this likes to imitate, right? So they are more likely to hit this. I have caught fish on this in ponds, more of a reaction bite, I'm sure. But this is kind of like a schooling fish kind of deal. But hey, if you can get to your lake on the bank and get on a nice point, um, I know, especially in California, there's a lot of them where you can get to on the bank, get to these nice points with deep rockiness on each side. It's beautiful. This thing will crush and you can do it from the bank, no problem. Something like this, um, something crazy. Your, you know, your buzz style baits. This is that, um, chop cut from jackal you guys seen this too uh this thing's pretty awesome i haven't had a chance to fish it yet but i know it's it's just a prop style bait you know it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a buzz bait basically it's a buzz bait with a sweet little feather that i can also i guess kind of walk well, we're gonna find that out maybe i'll do a video on that let me know let us know if you guys want me to fish this for a long time and then tell you about it because I'm going to fish it regardless. Whether or not you want me to tell you about it is a different story. But anyways, any type of your buzz style baits. Uh, this, you know, a Whopper Plopper, or the El Chapo, whatever one you guys want to use. Um, I don't remember what Guggen calls theirs. It's like something stupid, I don't know. This, a just a regular old buzz bait. Um, I know like also Jackal makes that pompadour thing where it just spits a bunch of water. Anything to make a bunch of commotion on the surface, like a buzz style bait. That's going to be killer in the summer. Again, early in the morning when those fish are feeding. Late in the evening. Again, major times. But all day, really, um, in the summertime. Because the fish usually are pretty active. Because it's so nice and warm. And you're going to find them near grass anyways. So, buzz baits. Buzz style baits. We're going to go subsurface now. I'm going to get away from the top water. Because that's kind of in the obvious with grass. If you guys have grass where... <clears throat> It's a little more sparse. Like you can't necessarily go throw in a crankbait, like a square bill, and you can't necessarily throw like a chatterbait or a spinnerbait because a little too much for that. Uh, you guys are in a lucky position because you guys have a little bit more to choose from. And you have probably my favorite spring through fall bait. Basically, and in the summer most of the time. Like early morning in the summer, it's hard to be a lipless crankbait. This is a Strike King uh, Red Eye Shad, and this is a Tungsten 2-Tap, I think. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's a tungsten 210. Uh, this is that gill color, lipless crankbaits. In the summertime, are awesome, especially around the grass. If you guys have that sparse grass and it's not goopy, nasty grass, you can get this through it. Bump up your rod power a little bit. You know, usually I throw this on a medium heavy. We throw it on that Dobbins Champion crankbait rod, the glass rod, it's awesome. You need something, when you're fishing this around uh, grass, you need something with a little bit more backbone so that when it gets hung up, you can rip free of the grass and it comes out clean. Because you know, you fish this on like a medium or like a really wobbly glass crankbait rod, you're gonna get where you get hung up in the grass, which is what you want, We've talked about this before. Hung up in the grass is good. But then when you go to rip it out of the grass, it's going to kind of just and then take grass with it. You want something with a little bit of backbone. You can rip it so it comes out, boom, clean. That's when you're going to get your strikes. I have devastated bass populations and ponds with one of these before. Uh, there's a pond I used to fish that if I caught it early enough in late spring, I'd have like a couple weeks where I could fish this throughout the whole pond before the pond scum came up and I had to go to solely a frog. And you could literally catch every fish in the pond. Maybe not, but I like to feel like I did. So from the bank, and you can bomb these. That's another thing about bank fishing is uh, about fishing these from bank. You can cast these a mile. So you can cover so much water. If you guys have sparse grass, you need to be fishing lipless crankbait, whichever one you prefer. Uh, like I said, the red eye shad's always one of my go-tos. The Spro Aruka shad, you know. Um, you've seen videos of me and Paul absolutely devastating fish on those. Um, and the regular, you know, the Cotton Cordell, the Rattle Trap. I mean, the Bill Lewis Rattle Trap. Any of them, pick one, I don't care. Use it. Now, I'm gonna go kind of same area. If you, this is that sparse grass still. If you've got that kind of grass and you want to try something a little different other than that lipless, go with a swim bait on some type of head. This is that Matt Allen uh, swim bait head. It's a quarter ounce, uh, pretty light wire hook. You know, it, it's not heavy enough that you couldn't fish it on a spinning tackle, and it's not light enough that if you fished it on a medium heavy, you're going to bend it out. Uh, it's perfect. I think it's like a three, maybe a two. I'm not really sure. I'm bad at that. I think it's a two. Might be a three. I don't know. It's perfect. I love this head. Matt Allen did a great job uh, designing this head. Um, this bait keeper is beautiful. It keeps those swim baits on. Awesome. Whatever you guys want to use, whether you're using the Kitech Swim Impact, you know, everybody uses those, the fats, or if you're using the uh, Gamblers or the Zachos or whatever. I don't care. You can even use a swimming worm. Doesn't matter. You got to cast this out. Now, the thing is with these, when you're fishing something on a on a fish <laughs> when you're fishing a bait on these swim bait heads in grass um, and you're not trying to get into it because it might be a little thicker than you want um, you just got to be on that reel as soon as this thing hits the water and you'll feel it you'll feel it start to tick tick the grass and if you're feeling like it's ticking and bunching up just raise that rod tip a little bit and increase your speed a little bit let this thing tick the top of the grass with the top hook since the hook sits on top of the swim bait when it's running like this, if you guys don't know, you know, it runs like, like this. When you're just ticking the top of the grass, if this is the grass, you know. These are spirit fingers. And these are gold. No, it's getting, that hook's nowhere near the grass. You know, it's coming and coming, but if you saw it fart to start, if you feel it fart, what if you feel this thing start to dig this way like it's buried in grass if you let it get too far when you rip up it's just going to go like this and you're going to be all screwed up be all kinds of jacked and that's no fun but these things are killer so if you can keep it up and going keep it ticking across the top of this grass these things murder they're great fish whatever you want on it swim bait swim worm I already talked about it that strike king um uh rage tail worm awesome love it perfect on these good for the summer good for those shitty situations when you're on the bank now last but not least this one is kind of a wild card <laughs> i say that because like, i don't know why i said that like it's like the most normal it's one of the most popular baits in the world and i'm telling you that it's a wild card and that's throwing a senko on a wacky rig <laughs> i know you're like wow the guy's throwing a wacky rig fucking mind-blowing idiots no this is the uh, weedless wacker. I think these are VMCs. Um, still got a line on it. 
That's awesome. Normally I don't like these weedless setups, but in the summertime, even from the boat sometimes I use these, but definitely from the bank. Um, I like these, again, that sparse grass situation. These do just fine. The keepers, at first I was a little, I don't know if you guys can see them. I was a little weary about them. I didn't think they would work, but they do. They're long enough. They're not too long where they get gumped up, uh, but they do pretty good. Depending on what kind of grass, if you've got any kind of mucky pond scum anywhere you're, you're casting, this is not going to work. But if you've got like good hydrilla or milfoil or any of those regular aquatic vegetation that's not uber thick, this thing will do fine for you. There's a couple other companies that make these wacky weedless hooks. I'm pretty sure everybody that makes a hook makes one. This one's good. I haven't ever had a problem with this. Uh, it's not perfect. You're not going to be weedless every time, but it's going to be weedless long enough that it does not going to matter. The great thing about it is that they hit bass hit wacky worm on the fall nine times out of ten, and like the fall right after you cast it. So it really doesn't have the time to get hung up. I would say probably 70% of the time when I'm fishing a wacky worm, wait, 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 when I'm fishing a wacky worm and I cast that thing out, it gets bit before I even start twitching it. It might get bit on the first twitch and fall, but probably seven times out of ten, it's getting bit on the fall. I'm watching the line tick in the water, or I'm picking up to do my first twitch, and it's already, I can already feel weight on there. So, that being said, like, wacky worms are a good thing for bank fishermen in the summer for that reason. Throw them Senkos, stick baits, whatever you want. I like to go in the summertime, especially from the bank, uh, when I'm dealing with a little bit thicker grass, uh, I like to downsize my worm a little bit. And I don't necessarily mean downsize as far as uh, length necessarily, but in weight. The thin Senkos are awesome. Yamamoto makes them, uh, the thin stick baits. Brent over at Inland Baits, one of our sponsors, he makes a thin stick. Uh, I think it's called the skinny stick. I can't remember. But it's just a skinny Senko. And what that does is it just keeps that bait more on top of the grass and the grass will deflect it off rather than it trying to push through the grass and burying itself so try that either shorten your senko to make it lighter or go with a thin one i really really suggest going with the thin one it's just a little bit better the anything you can get when you're fishing from the bank in the summertime any positive you can get use it so that's my one trick when you're fishing a wacky worm from this bank in the summer so that's what i got for you guys i mean Stay on the top of water. If you can get bites, why not? If you can throw a frog all day, do it. If you can't, and you got a little bit of sparse grass, boom, go to the damn lipless. Go to your swim baits. Go to your wacky worms. You guys, you can have so much fun bank fishing. I know it's hard in the summer. I know it's more hard just in general, and you kind of get limited in the summer with the grass. But you can still get out there and do it. I hope these baits, tips that I shared with you today help. I hope you guys don't just give up this summer and wait till the grass clears because I know I've done that before. Besides that, if you guys haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think about my favorite summer bank fishing lures. Tell me what I need, tell me what I don't need, tell me what you guys like, if you guys have any tips that I can use because I'm going to be bank fishing a little bit more because I like to do it and I don't have a boat right now, so I'm going to do that. Let me know. I want to know too. Leave it in the comments down below. Get at us on Instagram, TikTok, all those things. We got them all. Follow us all there. And go check out Brent over at Inland Baits, inlandbaits.com. Go get you some awesome soft plastics. They're great. Disco chicken. It's amazing. Salt sticks. Awesome. All kinds of stuff. Money makers. Where's that thing at? The money maker. I call it the money maker because I feel like I catch more fish on it. The money shot. It's great. Drop shot bait. All of them. All of his soft plastics are amazing. Use our code, boom, right here, DP20. Get 20% off at checkout. It's awesome. Inlandbaits.com. Go check it out. He'll also, <laughs> before I go, he will also pour you custom colors, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. If you want to call something pineapple nuclear explosion and do it pink and yellow and lime green and with black and chrome flake, he'll do it. He will do it. I don't know why you'd do that, but he'll do it. And you can show me the fish you catch on. You can probably catch smallmouth on it. Pissed off smallmouth during the spawn. They're pretty stupid. You can catch those on them. Be like clown. Like the color clown. I love that color. I don't think I've ever caught a fish on anything clown colored. But I love it so much. That's besides the point. He'll pour you custom colors. 
have a ball, go to the website, check it out. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Get out there, go fishing, whether it's on the bank or a boat. I don't care. It's beautiful. We all love fishing. Go do it. I'm out.